My name is Natasha T. Brown. My life has been affected by violence um, in the sense that I was in a violent relationship um, for almost three years. And I don't like to consider myself a victim. I believe that I'm a survivor now. But yes, I have been um, definitely affected by domestic violence. I think um, the first couple of times I, what, like, what, you know, kind of threw it out the door like, oh, this is just one time thing or, you know, it won't happen again or it's a bad period. But um, in 2012, there was a series of very violent um, events and incidents that left me in the hospital several times and even having to make excuses for the behavior and for my face and bruises. And so that is exactly when I knew that, yes, I was in a violent relationship. So on one hand, he was the perfect gentleman, and so you know when we weren't having a terrible, terrible fight, then it was it was great, you know. And so definitely being a gentleman for the most part, but then during those violent episodes, um, just kind of turning it around on me like it was my fault. And then um, later on, once I decided to, um, you know, once I started to be more vocal about it, or even, you know, I'm on um, social media, and so I would basically lash out and do like, you know, subtweets and really immature things. And at that point, he started to realize, you know, I was definitely becoming more vocal. And so then it was a power and control thing because through my profession, I had always been in the public eye. And so, um, he knew that that like my image and you know what people thought of me at the time was really one of the most important things to me and so it was almost like well if you tell anybody this then I'll tell people this so almost holding my flaws and my faults against me um, in order to keep me quiet and to keep me in that relationship. You know, I left and came back several times. And then um, at one point I just packed my things and left our home. But then even after that, I would go back and try to be friends. And, you know, still it was a codependent thing where we both were like very dependent on each other mm -hmm. and it was very unhealthy. But finally what made me have the courage to just get rid of him and keep him out of my life for good was I literally hit a point where God said that it was life or death. And you either choose this relationship, this friendship or whatever you want to call it, or you choose your life. And so at that point, it was so clear to me, like the voice was so clear and I decided that I was cutting all ties. Well, on the positive side, this has impacted my life by making me um, have the ability to be able to relate to all types of people. So the pain that I went through allows me to be able to connect with people on a deeper level and really accomplish what I realize is my purpose in life, which is to help others um, come out of different situations and to really stop being in bondage by their past and to, you know, see the blessings in their betrayal. So that is definitely the positive. On the negative side, it's definitely kept me very um, anxious and with anxiety and um, very difficult to trust people and to even let certain types of people in. Um, it's given me more discernment and, um, you know, I know like, you know, kind of I can sense a good spirit, bad spirit and the energy. It's very, made me much so very aware of energy and people and personalities. Um, I would say that another good way that this has impacted me is it's absolutely brought me closer to my faith and to, to God and to even, um, like I said, my purpose. And um, I definitely wouldn't take back the experiences that I've 
gone through for anything because now I feel like, you know, I can actually make an impact in the world in a deeper way. And not only can I help people tell their stories, but they can trust me and know that I've been there too. And so I don't look at it like, oh, it's a bad thing anymore because now I know that every pain has purpose. I would say yes. Um, when I was trying to get out of the relationship, um, absolutely I got help. And, you know, police want you to talk and, um, you know, the court system wants you to talk. The problem comes in is that it seems like they don't always realize the statistics of and the cycle of, you know, people leave and they go back. And so they treat you as if um, you're supposed to leave and like stay gone, which is very great in theory. But when you don't do that and you go back, then you're victimized and you're you're sort of blamed for it. And then when you want to speak out again, it's almost like, okay, are you telling the truth? Um, my situation is a little bit strange because through this relationship, I actually ended up in a very um, terrible legal situation in that someone tried to actually murder my ex-boyfriend while I was with him and I was there and I you know tried to stop it and then subsequently I was framed for it and the legal system they didn't have a hard time believing that I could do these things because of our history of violence so it painted a story and that of me that you know maybe I am retaliating now or using this as a way to get back at him and that's the stories that were painted about me. Um, yes, so I would definitely say that you know I was revictimized, but I don't. I wouldn't say that it's it's easy to avoid. Um, in society as well, I think that victims are revictimized because it's like you know you're always looked at like, are you telling the truth? Mm -hmm. And why don't you just leave? And it's your fault because you stay. And so the, that um, language that is so strong and prevalent in today's society really does make people go into silence and it makes people make the decision. Um, a lot of women make the decision that they aren't going to speak out and you're victimized by, you know, um, people who know you both, you know, because there are some people who will believe you, but then the people who know him and they know he's a charmer and he's this and he's great and he does this you know it's very hard for loved ones to even believe that this person could be a monster behind closed doors so the victim the re-victimization is not just with you know the legal system it's with society as well which is why um, conversations like this are so important because people start to be educated about the mindset of victims and um, the cycle of abuse